Arizona is presented by your Arizona Ford dealers. By Gatorade X Factor, the X Factor is always part of the game. Is it part of you? Gatorade X Factor, is it in you? And by Miller. There's good enough, and there's better than it has to be. Miller, good call. Cloudy night, but a very mild temperature night here in the heart of the South. Atlanta, Georgia, crowd rolling in here to Turner Field for the opening game of this three-game series. Randy Johnson on the mound for the Diamondbacks, and he'll be opposed by Atlanta left-hander Mike Hampton. Take a look at this road trip. Nary a day off. Four cities, coast to coast. On to Florida from here. The cross country jaunt to San Francisco for three against the Giants. And then wrap it up next weekend. Three games at Dodger Stadium against the first place Los Angeles Dodgers. Longest road trip the Diamondbacks have been on since 1998. Take a look at the Diamondbacks starting lineup tonight. Presented by Gatorade X Factor. Chad Tracy leads off at third. Matt Cade at second. Luis Gonzalez in left. Shea Hill and Brandon first. Steve Finley in center with Danny Bautista in right. A latter third of Alex Cintron, Robbie Hammock, and Randy Johnson. And off to a rough start so far this season. League hitting 348 against Mike Hampton. Well, you, you just never know who is the real Mike Hampton. Sometimes this guy's got the best sinker in the game. Sometimes he really flattens out. Let's hope the Diamondbacks get the, the guy that flattens out, Tommy, because they need to do something against some left-handed pitching. These guys have really struggled against left-handed pitching this year just for their own psyche. They need to beat up a lefty. Let's take a look at the Atlanta defense behind Mike Hampton. Chipper Jones, Andrew Jones, and J.D. Drew in the outfield. DeRosa at third, Jesse Garcia for the injured, Rafael for a call at short, Nick Green at second for the injured, Marcus Giles, and Julio Franco over at first, a battery of Hampton, and young Johnny Estrada, who is off to a fabulous start, taking over as the everyday catcher for the departed Javier Lopez. Just a lot of similarities in these two clubs. A lot of success the last few years. Obviously, the Braves with 12 straight division titles, but they're kind of in a team, a team in transition, as is the Diamondbacks. A lot of young guys out there. Sure, they've got Julio Franco. That always helps when you're 46, 47 years old, but there's a lot of babies out there for the Atlanta Braves, as there is for the Diamondbacks. So we are set to go. Mike Hampton has really struggled, not only overall this year, but especially in the first inning. 11 of the 33 runs he has surrendered in his 37 and two thirds innings have come in the very first frame. And that's what you need to do to start a big, long, tough road trip like this, Tom. Is get out of the gate quick. It's up to these first three headers to have good at bats and really make Mike Hampton struggle. Chad Tracy looks at a strike and we are underway. Chad at 341, a couple of home runs and 14 runs batted in. DeRosa in on the grass over at third. And that one ripped right off Hampton's belly. And he flips it on over to first to get the out. Hampton, a marvelous athlete, has won a gold glove for his defense on the mound. That one may have hurt him, Tommy. See the replay. Nothing Chad Tracy can do. He just hits a bolt right back at Hampton. Looks like it got him in the leg. And of course, it doesn't care him. It just goes right back to the ground right underneath him and he throws him out. It looks like that leg might have took a pretty big shot. This kid's a tough kid though. If at all he can stay out there he will stay out there. Hampton grew up in Florida where he was not only a baseball star but a fabulous football player a defensive back recruited by just about every one of the major division one power schools in the country the likes of Florida State and Notre Dame among others. Great athlete. Could play football. They said he was he could have played in the NFL. He was that good. And you see how tough he is. He took a wicked line. I mean Tracy smoked that ball right back at it. Looked like he got him right above the knee. Bad luck for the Diamondbacks instead of a leadoff base hit. Hampton's got it out, but he's got a he's got a little badge of honor on there. That little purple heart he'll have there. Well, you can tell just by the look on his face that he is still feeling. It. Yeah, he's definitely feeling it. 
I love it, though. He ain't going to rub it. He ain't going to let anybody know it hurt him, but he's hurting right now. He's got some, some sparks working right now. Matt Cato, 264 batter with a home run and 12 batted in, looks at ball one away. So Tracy hit that ball right on the nose, right off Hampton's leg, and we'll see if there are any lingering effects. One and one. That's what you want to have Hampton do. Once he gets up in the strike zone, he really flattens out. If that ball starts thigh high, it usually dives out of the zone. If it starts around belt high or belly button high, it's a good one to hit. Right under the glove of DeRosa into left field. And the Boo Birds out already here in Atlanta. They have played defense very much like the Diamondbacks have played defense <laughs> here through the first couple of four weeks, six weeks of the year. Well, there's the pitch. Kata rips it again this time. Whoop. Just never got the glove down. Ball was right on the ground. So the Diamondbacks get bad luck with Tracy, get some good luck with Kata. See if Gonzo can make that hurt. DeRosa charged with an error. One on, one out, and here's Gonzo at 277. Ten home runs and 23 runs batted in. Of course, every time you come here to Atlanta, as a member of the Diamondbacks, as a fan of the Diamondbacks, watching it on the home front here on the two, you always harken back to that 2001 season when the Diamondbacks came rolling in here. Tied at a game apiece in the National League Championship Series and swept Atlanta three in a row. Just squashed them. Squashed them. That was beautiful. That was when we knew we had a real good chance because the Braves were such a good team and we not only beat them, but we, we throttled them pretty good. And we said, you know, if we can do that against the Braves, we might be able to handle the Yankees. Right back to the mound. And the throw is in the dirt. They get the out there. They get the out at first. Wow. What a nice play by Jesse Garcia. Hampton a low throw. But Garcia not only picked it out of there, found the back, and then turned it. MLB at Home is presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Bobby Cox starting lineup for the Atlanta Braves. Jesse Garcia at short. Julio Franco at first. Chipper Jones in left. Andrew Jones at center. Johnny Estrada catching with J.D. Drew in right. A ladder third to Mark DeRosa, Nick Green, and Mike Hampton. And here's the Jeep scouting report on Diamondback left-hander Randy Johnson. I know you're going to be surprised at this, Tom. But this guy throws really hard, and he's got a very good slider and a good split finger. Surprise, surprise. And you look, he's going to have to go against the Joneses. Andrew and Chipper, nine career home runs. One of the few people named Jones or anybody that can say, you know what, I've done pretty well off the big fella. Here's Andrew Jones, been around a long time, still looks like he's 19 years old. Well, he's not much older than that. <laughs> Garcia digging in, and Johnson delivers strike one. Garcia, prior to Friday's game, placed on the bereavement list, had hit safely in nine of his last 11. At a 324 clip, you say he's playing extremely well right now. That one bunted, and Hillenbrand going to make the tag in time to get Garcia. What he was the only one play. going to the back. What a great play. Randy Johnson never got off the mound. That was all up to Shea Hill and Brand to make that play. The bump was a little too firm. And look at Shea. a boy, Shea. Get down there and make that play. I love to watch a first baseman just show his athleticism. You see Randy Johnson not even in the picture. It's all up to Shea. Great job. Good idea by Garcia. Better play by Hill and Brand. Now Julio Franco, a 271 batter, a home run, 14 runs batted in. Franco getting more playing time this season than he has the last couple of years. Of course, they picked up Robert Fick to play first base for him last year. And then after Fick really threw a cheap shot on Eric Caros during the National League Championship Series on a play at first base, then after the game proceeded to basically bury the entire Braves organization because 
they don't do things like that and won't tolerate things like that. Well Mr. Fick found out he's exactly right. He was no longer an Atlanta Brave. Go have some fun down in Tampa Bay with the Devil Rays Mr. Fick. Swing and a miss by Franco and he's gone on three straight pitches. Wow. The Diamondbacks defensively presented by Rico Steve Finley flanked by Luis Gonzalez and Danny Bautista in the infield Tracy Cintron on the left side with Caden Hillenbrand on the right side Johnson and Robbie Hammock the batter first two retired here in the Atlanta opening inning and now to be Chipper Jones. Jones 32 years old now out of Jacksonville Florida he's down a strike went on the disabled list with a strained right hamstring that was an ugly injury they had to take him off the field on a cart Mark we were watching that game I think I we were in San that. Diego you sure were chasing a ball in the gap and looked like he got shot he grabbed his right hamstring and they had to cart him off the field it looked a lot worse than a strain thankfully it was just a strain because you never want to see great players get hurt fast ball up check swing you didn't go around one and two you never want to see anybody get hurt no. especially guys like chipper that are good for the game that people come out to to watch and there you see Randy Johnson he's certainly gotten Randy's attention over the years Well Chipper Jones has a pair of two homer games against Randy Johnson and strangely enough they came one year to the day in back to back seasons. Most of the pitches that Chipper has hit off of Randy it just, the damage doing hits have been on pitches out over the plate. Randy's try he tries to pound him in with his fastball and slider but if he doesn't get it in Chipper hurts him. Not going to hurt him. Stop man. it. One two three for Johnson including a couple of strikeouts we go to the second inning no score. Thanks for sharing your DIY haircuts your savage moves and your adorable pets. Now it's our turn to share with the Geico give back a 15 percent credit on car and motorcycle policies lasting your full policy term. So thanks again. Top half of the second inning we go no score in the ball game Randy Johnson a very impressive opening inning of course he has been throwing the ball fabulously really since coming back at the end of last season if you go back to the 9th of September in his 12 starts only a five and five record but an ERA of two point six zero. Wow. And in his last four starts this year the ERA is not even one and a half. Well, I'm glad he's put to bed all those issues about whether his knee's okay or can he pitch at the age of 40 or 41. I think we found out the answer to that. That big fellow's throwing the you know what out of the baseball Indeed. this year. Indeed. Shea Hill and Brandle lead things off here in the Diamondbacks second against Mike Hampton, who got through a first inning without giving up a run. He picked up a nasty bruise in the process, but no more damage than that. Ground ball to short and Garcia throws out Hillenbrand. Garcia filling in for Rafael for a call who has not been placed on the disabled list despite the fact that he has not played the last 14 games due to a jammed right ring finger that he suffered while sliding headfirst into third base on the first of this month. They say he can hit. He can pick up the ball in the field but when he goes to throw the ball he can't grip the ball well enough to make an accurate throw so they can't play him. I was watching him take ground balls before the game and he just has to lob the baseball he can't throw it with any authority and it's too bad because he's got a cannon of an arm. He's fun to watch play the game of baseball. Good player. Sure is. On the outside corner is strike. Well we know the Diamondbacks are missing Richie Sexton the Braves have been missing everybody at one time or another through the first month and a half of the year they have only had their original penciled in starting lineup available for four games this entire year. They've had Chipper Jones out they've had J.D. Drew out you get a look 31 different lineups nearly a different lineup in every game for call and Giles out now Giles going to be out a long time. Had that terrible collision with Andrew Jones in center field 
and broke his collarbone. Uh, I also saw him today and he can't even move. Finley lifts one into right center field pretty well hit. And this is a big ballpark. And J.D. Drew in front of the wall makes a play two away. Well Tommy you are right when you say this is a big ballpark once you get in between the alleys there's a 380 there and a 390 there. It is a very big ballpark Steve Finley hit that ball darn near 400 feet right into the glove of the waiting J.D. Drew. Homer in Arizona without a doubt roof <laughs> open or closed. That have been in a swimming pool. Strike one of Danny Bautista. Now she, you should have made that observation because you have gone with more frequency into the pool than anybody. That's right. Don't you forget it either there Mr. Brenneman. Except you didn't get in the other night when you were out there. No I was. Which is just uh, ridiculous. You or Big Todd Wolf. That's that's bad on the Diamondbacks part not to not to shame one out. It is shameful that they didn't hit one out to us. I was out there ragging on Batista and Finley. Was, Come on do something Finley. Come on Batista. That's a fair ball and then bounces back foul. Hampton came springing off the mound. Estrada could never find it. <laughs> Which way did he go. So Danny gets new life. <laughs> Watch Estrada. This is a helpless feeling right here. OK where is it. Uh, oh, hey somebody tell me where it is. Where, hey golly. Johnny it's right up here. It's right up here Johnny. Johnny look. Oh. No, he didn't look. We were trying to help him Tommy. He wouldn't listen. High and away two and two to Bautista. Danny at three forty three five home runs and twenty seven runs batted in. Just continues to impress. And very consistent right throughout the entire homestand. Two two. Into right field and Drew coming to get it. It will fall in front of him. A two out single for Danny Bautista. Boy J.D. Drew made a dangerous play right there. He fielded that ball off to the side. Fortunately it went into his glove or we could have seen Danny Bautista possibly circle and there's a little flare out into right. Here comes J.D. Drew played it off to the side came up with it. That thing could have easily gone out to the wall. And he couldn't have caught that any cleaner. Nice play but very dangerous kids. Keep it in front. Now Alex Cintron at 241 a home run and 10 runs batted in. Alex this season has been far better from the left side than the right. Batting right handed is what really has dragged his batting average down although not here. That ball driven into left center field it'll go to the wall and bring in Danny Bautista. They're going to wave him around and Garcia will make the throw to the plate. It is not in time. Throw gets by Hampton and all the way to third goes Cintron. So give Alex a double and a run batted in the Diamondbacks with a one nothing lead. Well, I'm not sure of the numbers Tommy but I know Alex Centron was a very good right handed hitter last year better than left. It's been the opposite this year. He hasn't done much at all right handed but don't tell Mike Hampton that because Centron just hit a laser beam out into the right center gap. And Diamondbacks off to a good start. There you see the relay perfect relay right there and then whoa this one goes about anywhere but to the catcher allowing Centron to get to third. A double and RBI for Alex he goes to third on the throwing air by Garcia and now Robbie Hammock breaking ball in there a strike. Well, what a pretty breaking ball that is. You know with the number nine hitter on deck in Johnson it's tough in this situation if you're Robbie Hammock you don't know if you're going to get pitched around or if you're going to get strikes. One and one to Robbie Hammock. 
grounded foul. Our GMC professional grade game note. This is his favorite city to visit. He played at the University of Georgia. Grew up in Marietta. And it's only natural his favorite movie would be Forrest Gump. <laughs> right? We've had a few people like Forrest Gump, haven't we? And I guess that band Outcast is from Atlanta. Yes, they are. Okay. I know the B-52s were from uh, down in Athens, Georgia. REM, aren't they uh, Yeah. local? I think they're Athens also. I think they are too. It's the end of the world as we know it. <laughs> Strike three call. That's the way Hammock feels right now. <laughs> One run, couple of hits. One nothing, Diamondback. Bottom of the second inning, Diamondbacks out to an early one nothing lead. Randy Johnson setting down the side in order with a couple of strikeouts in the bottom half of the first inning. And our Bank of America higher standards once again. Johnson healthy, and that means pretty much you can book it. He'll be. The strikeout leader in both leagues. You got that right. Look at the second guy on there, Ben Sheets. His yesterday or Sunday, I believe it was, Ben Sheets pitched against these Atlanta Braves and struck out 18, Tommy. So this team's not afraid to strike out. No, in fact, uh, we were talking about it before the game. The Braves have had three games already this year where they have struck out 15 or more times in a game. That's hard to do. <laughs> And you see why. Pedro Martinez leads the American League, in fact, tied with Kurt Schilling. Each with 56 strikeouts on the year, so Johnson 14 better than that duo. One and one. Well, I've watched this kid Andrew Jones play for about 10 years now, whatever it's been, and such an impressive player. In the air, straight away center field, playable out there for Finley. One away. Got a lot of power, perennial gold glove center fielder. It's hard to believe Andrew Jones just turned. 27 years old. Did he really? He's put some gaudy numbers up. Wow. I think Randy might have gotten away with a fastball right down the middle on Andrew, and he's kind of saying, you know what? I'm going to get him next time if he throws one right there. Let's see if he can strike out this kid, Tommy. It's been hard to do this season unless you're Ben Sheets. What a year for Johnny Estrada. Leads all National League catchers and runs batted in. Second only to Paul LaDuca for the best batting average among all catchers in the National League. He's only struck out 11 times the entire season. Three of those came in the Ben Sheets game a couple of days ago. I like this kid's approach. Talking with Don Sutton before the game, you and I got the chance to see the Hall of Famer. He said he loves the way this kid plays. Says with two strikes, he'll choke up. There's Mr. Sutton. Good man. Great man. Yep. Says he'll choke up and have lots of anywhere from 12 to 15 pitch at bats. Well, Bobby Cox wasn't lying when he called this kid a tough out. He was traded straight up, remember, for Kevin Millwood a couple of years ago. That's how highly thought of Johnny Estrada was coming up through the Phillies organization. John Sherholtz has done a remarkable job as a general manager here in Atlanta. Took over the GM job from Bobby Cox. Cox was the manager and the general manager. Swung on and fouled back out of play at different points in time during his Atlanta career. Was here many years ago as a skipper, left to go to Toronto. Came back as the general manager of the Braves. And then when he found out they could hire Sherholtz, he said, give him the job, I'm going back on the field. 
and they've won 12 straight divisional titles. I think that's a pretty good decision Bobby made. And you and I were here in 1990 in one of the most bizarre moments really in the uh, the 91 season I beg your pardon when remember they made the trade to get Freddie McGriff and they had that explosion here at the old ballpark at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium the Cubs were in town to take on the Atlanta Braves you were playing for the Cubs you might have been in the clubhouse at the time it was during batting practice but they announced a deal for McGriff there was a huge explosion of fire in the stands I Thankfully, do remember that the now. gates weren't open yet and that started the second half run that propelled the Braves to their first division championship since 1982. Look at this kid foul pitches off pitch after pitch just what we were talking about. It's almost to the point now where if you're Randy you don't want to spend your whole evening trying to strike this guy out. You know what if you walk him you walk him great here lay it in the middle and let's see if he can just hit it on the ground somewhere if he hits it but let's not waste 20 pitches on this kid. Well nine of them so far and you saw just Johnson like what do I got to do to get this guy out exactly and we all know Randy now it's a challenge for Randy you know Randy knows he can strike out anybody in the game and now it's become a challenge for him it's become a mono -a mono thing and he ain't going to back up now. Three two pitch got him ah, swinging at a boy Randy beautiful slider <laughs> look at you single <laughs> like get out of here yeah beautiful slider Estrada just right over the top of it he didn't miss it by much he didn't miss it by much that's what they tell you when you're really going bad though right make you feel good about yourself yeah, oh, you were this close it, man. Meanwhile, you're swinging at stuff in the dirt. Now you, you're right on that, Gracie. I don't know how you missed that. Shut up. I missed that ball by five feet. Leave me alone. What a good at bat that was. Ten pitch at bat before going down on strikes, and now it's quickly 0-2 on J.D. Drew. Came over from the St. Louis Cardinals. Of course, a former number one pick by the Philadelphia Phillies. Elected not to sign there, and then. They wound up working out a deal to send him to the Cardinals when healthy. He is a fabulous talent. He sure is. There's very little if anything he can't do. But the problem is keeping him on the field. Well, he Another can't hit problem a high is fastball. trying to hit Randy Johnson. <laughs> Four strikeouts in the game for the big fella. One nothing D-back. MLB Priceless Moments presented by MasterCard. Gives the ball to the kid. <laughs> How awesome is that? Jimenez in the air. Gone! And there's one happy fan. That's why we love this great game and the great players in it. The moment. That's amazing. That is amazing. There big hug for Big Josh Bell fan. I wish you a long and happy life together. Mike Trout, as usual, signing autographs for some young fans and the reaction, priceless. Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Net Arizona is presented by Aflac. Ask about it at work. And by your local Chrysler dealer. One nothing ball game at the end of two. Diamondbacks scored after two were out in the second inning. Got a single by Danny Bautista and he scored on a double by Alex Cintron. Many of the folks back on the home front just now rolling in from work or getting out of work. So glad to have you with us. Diamondbacks off to the early 1 0 lead. It'll be Johnson, Tracy, and Kata against Mike Hampton. Randy, 3 of 16 with three runs batted in. Hampton of course one of the most dominant starters in the National League going back to his days with Houston and then with the New York Mets swing and a miss 
Hampton his only season in New York a 15 game winner pitched the Mets to the World Series against the Yankees that year then made the decision to sign with Colorado as a free agent. Johnson gone on strikes and really the wheels have fallen off for Mike Hampton up until about the midway point of last year over a solid two and a half years. 15 and 10 and ERA barely over three and 2000 after a phenomenal 99 many thought he should have won the Cy Young rather than Johnson. Then an 01 in Colorado ERA of almost five and a half over six a following year struggled out of the gate here last season then came on strong. I think he got all that money Tom and I think a guy like Mike Hampton was such a bulldog he is such an aggressive guy and he's a proud guy. I think every time he takes the mound now he feels like he has to earn that money. So instead of instead of just being talented and going out there and pitching his game I think a lot of times he feels he needs to show the baseball world that I'm I'll show you why I'm the highest paid pitcher in baseball. That can work against you. Rolled over foul by Chad Tracy. Of course the Florida Marlins are actually paying most of Hampton's salary these days. Real bizarre deal when Hampton was technically traded to Florida and then they assumed his contract dealt him to Atlanta and and for a smaller market team paying a lot of his money now with a big market club in Atlanta. That was strange. So really Mike Hampton's pitching for the Atlanta Braves for nearly free. Kind of nice, kind of a nice gig if you can get it for the Atlanta Braves. Three and one to Chad Tracy and he takes ball four. Boy, a couple of excellent at bats tonight by Tracy against the left hand. Well, after he put a lump on Hampton's leg the first time, Hampton decided, you know what? I don't think I want to throw this kid any strikes. So, kind of nitpicked a little bit, and Tracy laid off all of them. Great at bat. Tracy with all kinds of family at the ball game here tonight. We met his father in the hotel a little bit earlier today. His grandparents are here. His mother is here. And lots of friends as well. They make their home in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. Not a bad drive from here. About how far is that, Tom? Yeah, a little over four or five hours. Just enough time once you start to get tired of driving, you're here. Absolutely. It's good to have the Tracy family here. On the outside corner, a strike going one to Cato. Man reached on an error by Mark DeRosa his first time up. My goodness. What a lousy call that was. Matt thought so too. Greg Gibson, the home plate umpire. That pitch was not even close to a strike. In the air, left center field, Chipper Jones waving off Andrew Jones. Two are gone here in the Diamondback third. Well the Diamondbacks have already scored more runs for Randy Johnson tonight than they did in his last start when he got beat by Tom Glavin one nothing. And that was kind of the beginning of the downfall when the Diamondbacks had come out and just lambasted the Mets back to back games. Then you get a great outing like Johnson had and you get beat one to nothing. Since then they weren't even competitive the last four games of that homestand. Ball one to Luis Gonzalez. He bounced into a double play, ending the first inning. But now a fresh start. First day of a long road trip. Tommy, you're going to see, you're going to get to know me real well this Absolutely. road trip. Absolutely. Bunk beds? What do you think? It's what I heard. You and I are having in Florida. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I get that. Can I have the top one or you want the top one? Uh, it doesn't make any difference. I am getting, what about a houseboat? Why, why don't you might get have to, <laughs> <laughs> you, might, you might want to sleep on top. <laughs> well, I figured a guy like you, with all your connections down there, you know that South Beach crowd, that you could, you know, get us lined up for like a 
one of those big houseboats. Well, I would think that, uh, you know, I do have some pull down there. I think I'll see what I can do. Let's see if we can get a get a houseboat and yes. have, the, have the whole crew on there. Absolutely. With us. We'll set sail maybe after the, the afternoon game on Sunday. That'll be a four day trip into Florida. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then wrap it up Monday afternoon. Well, how about that team? Is that a special young team down there? And the oldest manager in all the baseball leading. Well, what a great job Jack Lakina did last year. There's ball four to Gonzo. Two walks here in the third inning, and now a chance for Hillenbrand. Kind of makes you wonder if Hampton's leg is tightened up at all. Throwing the ball wherever he wanted the first two innings. Now he's walked a couple of guys, and that's what, and that's what you do. You have to make Mike Hampton throw strikes because his ball moves so much. You got to get him up in the zone. Keep him around bell tie and then you, then his ball flattens out and you can whack it. It moves almost as much as that guy normally does. <laughs> Leo Mazzoni. What a delightful guy Mazzoni is. Funny man. He is hilarious. Still wears his Notre Dame T-shirt yep. underneath all the time. He's rocking now. There he goes. I've always been fascinated by those people and Leo is one of these kind of people that can always remember every joke they ever hear. <laughs> you know, right. I mean, it, every time you see him, he said, hey, have I told you about and he'll have 10 or 15 in a row if he got the time to sit there and talk with him. It's amazing. <laughs> and they're all hilarious. Yeah. None of them are lousy jokes. No. They're all hilarious. I'll tell you what, it's pretty good. Talk about job security. Yeah. Atlanta Braves pitching coach for the last 12 years. 0 oh and 2 to Hillenbrand with two on and two out. And there's strike three call, which will end the inning. Two men left, middle of the third. Diamondbacks lead by Campton and the Braves 1 0. It's time for our America West Airlines Flight Fund Fly Ball Contest. And there's a postcard with your name, address, phone number, flight fund number, and outfield position to the address on your screen. Our contestant tonight is Marilyn. Siebenhaller of Lake Havasu City. Maryland has gone with left fielder Luis Gonzalez. If he catches a fly ball this inning, Maryland, you win 15,000 flight fund miles. Enough for one free round trip ticket on select America West Airlines flights. America West, Arizona's hometown airline with more flights to more cities. Last of the third, one nothing Diamondbacks, and Randy Johnson going to work on the bottom of the order. DeRosa, Green, and Hampton. Randy is not allowed a base runner. He struck out four of the first six. And this Mark DeRosa is a is a mystery. I always thought this kid was going to be a real good player. He's really off to a slow start this year. And really getting a chance to play every day for the first time. Hit that ball a long way, the other way, but Danny Bautista there. Did Maryland pick Danny Bautista? Nope. Maryland. Well, Green replacing Marcus Giles. Here's the collision. And this is ugly. Well, I don't even want to watch this. Broken collarbone for Giles. And as you can see by the replay, Talking with Don Sutton and Joe Simpson, the Atlanta Braves broadcasters, they said when they saw it in person, they were thankful that's all it was. You know, the way what? his head snapped back, and it was ugly. It looked like he could have broken about everything possible right there. What a shot he took at full speed! Just glad it glad it's just a collarbone. One and two on Nick Green with one out and nobody on. Green two for his first six. Made his major league debut in that game replacing Marcus Giles. And got his first hit and first RBI in the fifth inning of that game. Well, nice going Nick. They liked this kid a lot. He was leading the International League with a 377 batting average. Got a lot of playing time in the spring. It's where he caught the eye of Bobby Cox.
Well, Randy's throwing hard, Tom. He's got his good fastball tonight. He's using a lot of fastballs, and I like to see that. Randy's a fastball pitcher first, and then the slider's off of it. Pulled foul. Talked about Marcus Giles. We'd like to send him a happy birthday. 26 years old today. Well, happy birthday, Marcus. Sorry you can't be out on the field to enjoy it a little more. Of course, last year he had the collision with Mark Pryor. That's charging right. into the field a ground ball. Hit towards second. Pryor was running first to second. And Giles suffered a concussion on the play. Of course, his brother Brian playing for the Padres, mm -hmm. the right fielder. I think that would be kind of cool if not only, you know, you see some brother tandems in the in the major leagues, but what, wouldn't that be cool if they both made the all-star team in the same yep. year? Because they're both all-star caliber players. And Giles was well on his way. Cintron charges, throws in time. Nice play by Alex on a slow roller to the left side. Nice play by Alex Cintron there. Alex driving in the solo run. He's gets comes up with a tough hop, makes a good strong throw to just nip. Green. Nice play, Alex. Randy will be very happy with you. Now Mike Hampton with two down and nobody on. This guy could easily be, be hitting sixth in this lineup, Tommy. <laughs> You're not a lion. 12 home runs. Well, what do you think about that award, Gracie? A Silver Slugger Award for pitchers. <laughs> Something's that's an oxymoron. Yeah. No question about it. Because he's one of maybe three guys in the big leagues that are actually decent hitters so but this guy is a very good hitter one two pitch just low you see position players swing over the top of that one he was able to lay off of it now the break even pitch Fastball at 96 miles per hour. Wow, oh, baby. Five strikeouts through the first nine batters for Johnson. I fly. Our little buddy loves it down here in Georgia. Lots of rain. <laughs> Our Aflac trivia question What player named Jones has the most career home runs? Barnaby carried the big lumber back in his day. Yes, he did. That was big league show. I loved Barnaby Jones. Mm -hmm. A Quinn Martin production. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we will give you the answer the next half inning. That's my guess, Barnaby. <laughs> Steve Finley to lead things off. He'll be followed by Danny Bautista and Alex Cintron. Diamondbacks with a 1 0 lead. Scored in the second inning on a single by Danny, a double by Alex. They had 2 1 in the third and left him there. Finley had a ball a long way, caught in front of the wall in right center field his first time up. 1 and 1. Hampton this year apparently has not only struggled batter after batter, he has struggled in at bats with the same batter, meaning he'll look great for a couple of pitches. And then all of a sudden he'll leave two or three balls in an at bat that guys can whack. You give him that many chances, they're not going to miss him. On the ground of Julio Franco and Steve retired one away. And they really believe a 
most of his problems stem from mechanics. He just can't get the same release point. Thus, Mark, like you talked about, sometimes that sinker will just eat you up. Then other times it's right down the middle of the plate. Exactly. And this guy, over the course of his career, knew exactly where that sinker was going. Kept everything at the knees, running, cutting, diving. You know, the last couple of years, it's just been a lot of them around belt high and right down the middle. Those are easy to hit. Danny chases one and rolls over quickly to a win. That, see, that's the kind of pitcher that Mike Hampton's always been. Something down around the ankles. All you're going to do with it if you swing at it is that right there, a little chopper to the third baseman. But then lately he'll come out and then make a bad pitch to this hitter. So just got to stay with him. The Braves are hoping that Hampton will get in a groove like he did after a slow start last year. And they really think if he could just have a, a good first inning, which he had tonight, and, you know, get four or five innings in a game where he's on a pretty good roll, that maybe that will get him started. He's throwing the ball pretty well here tonight. So far, so good. He has made some really good pitches. And now, all of a sudden, he's left a couple of balls up, and now he's 2 0 to Alex. It's just very strange how pitchers of this quality can all of a sudden just just lose it for a couple of three pitches. Two and oh to Alex Cintron who knocked in the only run of the game with a double lines this one to short and that'll end the inning. One two three go the Diamondbacks for the first time tonight. We head for the bottom of the fourth one nothing. All righty, time to answer our Aflac trivia question. What player with the last name Jones has the most career home runs? Larry Wayne Jones, a.k.a. Chipper. 284 home runs, going to hit 300 this year. And number two is Andrew Jones. Back to back in this lineup, three, four hitters. I bet you Rupert Jones had to be close. Uh, Number three. Was he? Yep. He was a good player. Mm -hmm. San Diego, right? Yep. <laughs> Randy Johnson has set down the first nine to come to bat against him tonight. Top of the order here in the Atlanta fourth inning. Garcia, Franco, and Chipper Jones. Randy, five strikeouts. He's thrown 45 pitches in the 0 2. See you later. Wow. Well, who better to turn to than Big Todd Walsh for some historical perspective on Joneses through the years. Yeah, let's keep up with the Joneses, shall we? Uh, wow. Tom and Mark. There are other Major League Jones that you know of. Maybe some you, you haven't heard of. Our research staff. How about Bumpus Jones? Yeah. Fielder Jones. Cowboy Jones. Cleon Jones of the Miracle Mets. Odell Jones. I think from the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates fame. Dalton Jones. Mac Jones. There were two Deacon Jones, but neither, of course, David Deacon Jones of the Fearsome Foursome. You had uh, Binky Jones. Nippy Binky. Jones. You never heard of Binky? Uh, there was Red Jones, Broadway Jones, Tom, Tex Jones, Elijah, Jim, Jack, and Charlie. And there was one Davy Jones, but don't confuse that Davy with the lead singer of the Monkees or the other Davy Jones who had to change his name to David Bowie because Davy Jones of the Monkees was a more wow. marketable product than. We're getting brought up on lots David of Jones. different Jeez. topics here. Eh? <clears throat> a wealth of knowledge. The, and speaking of Barnaby. The King. Jones, Go ahead. Barnaby Jones, did you ever see the episode, guys, where, where Buddy Epson, who played Barnaby Jones, actually arrested the criminal on the show who happened to be Max Bayer, who played Jethro? That's it was right. An amazing episode. Straight away center field, and Finley will have room in front of the track. Wow. Well, there was me and Mrs. Jones. That's right. Oh, there you go. Absolutely. That was Big League Tune. Yes, it was. Billy Paul. Paul Nolan says a great great version of that well Tom Jones obviously had a very short uh, time of it in the major leagues and then yeah. went on a bigger and better thing that's Absolutely. right he knew where his what's you know, new pussycat <laughs> whoa 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 <laughs> boy did all the girls love Tom Jones they still, still do, do. Jeez. 
been going strong low these many years. You, you never saw the episode when Jethro was arrested. I never saw that. Max Bear. Wow. Well. Barnaby Jones always got his man. Yes he did. But at the end of that episode he said well doggies. That's why I kind of crossed over the whole. Really. <laughs> no I never saw that episode. Not too much wow. time on my hands. Way, way too much. That's some. That is some of the best useless information. <laughs> Thank you. I sure learned a lot. Though. I, I have. I have. I mean, I, I'm still blown away by the David Bowie thing. Unbelievable, isn't it? It really is. Unbelievable. Davy Jones was bigger than Bowie at the time. Nobody bigger than the big unit. Look right at the big now. boy tonight. Seven strikeouts through the front four. MLB at Home is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Hey, don't forget, coming up tonight, it's the Arizona Sports Report. 30 minutes of nightly sports news completely dedicated to the home teams throughout Arizona. Coming up on the show tonight, obviously, post-game coverage from here at uh, Turner Field in Atlanta. Fan favorite Mike Fetters will check in on his status. And also, Richie Sexton. Taking batting practice today and quickly uh, Tom Brenneman Mark Grace had a chance to hear from Richie after he took his round of BP. He was uh, obviously happy he got over the mental hurdle hurdle of getting back in and facing pitching obviously he was off the tee and the soft toss and was really happy he said that he went to right field a couple of times because that uh, was a clear indication to him that uh, he is well on his way back so there was no pain. We'll hear more from him tonight on the Arizona Sports Report and tomorrow on our Diamondbacks Countdown Show. We will look forward to it. And of course the Diamondbacks are hoping that there will be no you know, ill effects tomorrow with that shoulder and he'll take batting practice again the next couple of days including quote unquote live batting practice against Shane Reynolds here on Thursday. And then uh, if he's ready to roll maybe Friday Richie Sexton back in the lineup. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Hammock a fly ball right at Chipper Jones one away. Well, hopefully the Diamondbacks offense won't get complacent here, Tom, just by we saw that a couple of times in the home stand. They get a one get off to an early start, score a couple of runs and then just decide to sit on it. And let's hope that doesn't happen tonight because Hampton's kind of rolling through them here in the middle of the game. Randy Johnson down a strike. Randy struck out against Hampton his first time up. The last Diamondback hit and they only have two they came back to back to produce a run in the second inning single by Batista and then the double by Alex Intron. And remember right before Danny Batista's hit was when Johnny Estrada couldn't find that little tapper in front of the mound. Lined in the right field that ball smoked by sure Johnson. Was. But right at J.D. Drew. Tell you what if he could have got some elevation on that ball we might have seen an oppo. Homer from the big boy. It's all right. I don't want to see him run the bases. Just get out there and pitch, big fella. Now Tracy, who has had a couple of excellent at bats, hit a line drive right off Hampton's leg. Hampton picked it up, threw him out his first time up, and then Tracy drew a walk in the third. Wicked breaking ball there for strike one. Well, he had never seen a curve ball from Mike Hampton. He just saw beauty there. That's the great thing about Chad Tracy hitting 340. Is he's never seen Mike Hampton. He's never seen any of these guys he's facing. He's still out there doing a heck of a job. And he's not a leadoff hitter. He's never done that before. He's doing anything he can to help this ball club get out of the funk. And they generally say the first time against a guy advantage pitcher right. Well it's always advantage pitcher I think but. Diving play by DeRosa. And a throw is offline. We'll see how they score that. That was a mighty tough play by DeRosa. Looked like a good throw would have had him and they scored a base hit. And I think that's the right play because. It would have take, taken a superb effort by DeRosa. Great job. What a nice play diving. It's hard to get up and throw it right on the money, but nice try by DeRosa. And 
Franco couldn't stay on the bag. He tried to do the toe dance and right off the end of his glove. I got to give that a base hit too. So you were saying now you think advantage pitcher. Well, I think it's always advantage pitcher. I think the more you see a guy, the more you know how. For instance, when I when I was playing, I always kept in the back of my mind how have I had success off this guy and how has he had success off me. Um, if I've hit fastballs off this guy, I'm not going to be looking for too many fastballs. This guy's gotten me out with sliders in the past. I would imagine that's the way he's going right. to. And then it becomes a chess match. And he's thinking, well, Gracie knows I've gotten him out with sliders, so I might throw him some fastballs. But I think it's always advantage pitcher. Down the right field line towards the corner. The ball is found. But I think the more you see a guy and the more you know the type of pitcher he is, the the way his ball tends to move I think you start to get a little more advantage advantageous to the to the hitter but I think early it's always advantage pitcher. Oh and two to Kata. Two outs here in the top of the fifth inning. Diving back to the one nothing lead. That's the other thing about it. Tracy hitting in the leadoff spot. You get a lot of pickoff throws over there because they think you can run. They don't know you. Oh, he must be fast if he's leading off. Grounded foul. Well, Chad has attempted three stolen bases. A couple of them were hit and runs where there was no hit. <laughs> And he was thrown out because there's not a lot of running. <laughs> That's a bad feeling too <laughs> when you're out by 35 feet on a hit and run that where there was no hit. Right. <laughs> it was just a run. Again 0 2 to Matt Cato. Down and in one ball and two strikes. Giants and the Cubs opening a series tonight at Wrigley Field. Jason Schmidt on the mound in that one for San Francisco. The Dodgers are in the fourth inning with a 6 5 lead over Philadelphia. A little slugfest going on here. Indeed. And that was Wilson Alvarez who had an ERA of one. Swing and a miss, strike three with a runner going, and that'll end the inning. A hit, a man left, middle of the fifth. 1 0 Diamondbacks. The new house is amazing. Except there's this rap problem. At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. We'll get ready for Max Kellerman. He goes toe to toe with the biggest names in sports five nights a week. Your guy, Gracie that is my guy. Tonight at 10:30, only on Fox Sports Net. Now I wonder who's on the program tonight with IMAX. You're not on tonight, are you? Via well, satellite hookup. Well, we're, we're waiting. We're waiting until we go to New York, and then we're going to do a full hour. I'm going to do a full hour with Max Kellerman. You know, if this game goes fast enough, we can get home in time to catch IMAX. You're exactly right. You look at Randy Johnson. Twelve up, twelve down through the front four. Lined into left field right at Gonzalez off the bat of Andrew Jones one pitch and one out by far the hardest hit ball of the night by Atlanta. Well Tommy you know he's perfect through four and when you start to see some outs like that you kind of think hmm I wonder if this might be a special night. And that's all I'm going to say. Leave it at that. No I'm going to have to say more eventually. Randy Johnson, 9 of 13 first pitch strikes. He's gone to 0 and 2 five times, 1 and 2 three other times. And five strikeouts in those situations, seven strikeouts overall in the game so far. 13 in a row set down by Johnson to begin this ballgame. Johnny Estrada had a 10 pitch at bat his first time up. Johnson wound up striking him out. Threw a fastball at 96 up and away, and he's ahead 0 2. Randy's getting a lot of swings at that high and away fastball tonight. That's when you know Randy's throwing hard 
when you start seeing swings at pitches that are higher than high I'm talking neck high nose high that's when you know Randy's got his great fastball. Oh and two on Estrada fought it off another fastball Johnson will turn 41 years old on September the 10th. Last year limited to just 18 starts due to the injured right knee that put him on the DL twice had it surgically repaired and finished the season very strong. I'm sure there had to be some doubts in his mind about whether he was going to be healthy enough again to pitch the way he did the year before. And he's throwing the ball as well this season as we've seen him in any season. One and two. Well he really has. He has been so solid for the D backs. Per usual you've come to expect that from him. And if he keeps this up he's going to have to sign another big extension. Pitch till he's like Nolan Ryan, 46 years old or something. Down the left field line, looking foul. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Are you? Is it starting to sink in here, Tommy? Are you I, beginning I, I, to feel what I'm feeling? I feel it. Hmm. Ball's just barely foul. Line drives, finding gloves. Got his A stuff. We may have to start getting a little serious here. It's a big batter right here because this kid really battled Johnson in the second inning. And he's battling him again here. That fastball at 97 miles per hour. And up out of the zone. Kid still able to fight it off. This guy gave Randy all he wanted before striking out. His first at bat, he's doing it again. Johnson okays a sign and again the one two and it's in the right center field Danny is there to away in the inning. I think that was pitch number seven of that at bat so this kid kid has seen 17 pitches. Isn't that amazing. But he's 0 for two that is amazing. That's two at bats. And again you talk about the advantage pitcher against hitter is the first time his kid seen Randy Johnson. That's right. But he's battling and you know you're 0 for two you're dejected but. Man you're getting a lot of respect from the Diamondbacks and your own teammates. And you can bet from Randy Johnson as well. Randy O'Kang with the umpire you saw he asked where was that pitch was it low or was it away umpire told him he said all right and that's and how you right back to work. That is how you ask. You don't holler at the umpire you just ask politely where'd you have that one and they'll usually tell you now if you. Act a fool out on the mound or something. Umpire might just uh... lined into right field, and Bautista is there. Couple of line drive outs in the inning. Mm. We go to the sixth <laughs> one. <nothing. laughs> and Brock delivers. High drive into deep right field, and the hitting streak goes to 30 as Gonzalez hammers a two run home. That would be the final game in the hitting streak of Luis Gonzalez in 1999 our Bank of America higher standards. Five years ago today it came to an end. I guess technically five years ago tomorrow. That was a game he went hitless in. 30 games that's an amazing streak. How about 56. That's unheard of. That that that's one I don't think will ever be broken. I really don't. Well Sports Illustrated went through probably 10 or 15 of the you know I guess most prestigious records that are held in professional sports today they did it I think two or three years ago and uh, went to a Las Vegas odds maker you know and they have ways of figuring out what odds are that's sure. what they do for a living and the longest odds of a record being broken was the 56 game hit streak. and you're talking about baseball or all of all sports. sports. All sports more than the you know most yards passing or most yards rushing or most points or you know uh, consecutive games with however many points sure. in a basketball whatever. I think the other well I don't know if you can put this Cy Young's career yeah. wins. I mean I, I what was it 500 and some odd right. wins I don't think that one will ever be. No. 
No, no chance. Nor, nor will be, uh, nor will 4,256 hits. Nobody's getting that no. one either. Pete Rose's career hits is safe. Yeah. I don't think anybody's going to get that. But the 56 is something that everybody can relate to. Pete, it's a, it's not a career thing. It's just a by season thing, which is a little more fun to deal with. Saw the shot out on the wall here at Turner Field about one of the game's all-time greats, the all-time home run king, Henry Aaron. And Barry Bonds in his pursuit of the all-time home run record in baseball. Well, one that also will never, now that we're talking about, is Cal Ripken's career games. Yep. That one checked up on him. And he still throws out Gonzalez. You reach for it and then it bounces away from you. That one had a lot of cue ball English on it. And hit the sand wedge. Spins it back, but Hampton's such a good athlete, such a good fielder, just never panics. Steps and throws. But like I said, Mike Hampton's starting to go through the Diamondbacks as Randy is to the Braves. Gotta put some pressure on these guys. Get a little offense going. Shea Hillenbrand grounded to short in the second inning. He ended the third with two on when he struck out. 1-0 and to Hillenbrand. That's what you have to do. You have to lay off those low sinkers and curveballs. Make him get it up in the zone. He got Gonzo to chase a low one. DeRosa. Throws high, but Franco able to keep the foot on the bag. Two away. Rosa does a good job, plants his feet, throws it high, but Franco goes to the back of the bag. And you can do that because the ball is coming down. The, if you stay in the front of the bag, you may have to leap for that throw. But if you go behind the bag, it may come down just enough to get to your glove. Good play by Julio. And I guess you do that when the ball might go over your head if you try to stay in front of the bag, right? Right. If you see the ball higher than high and you're thinking you may have to jump, sometimes you can go to the back of the bag and the ball will come down to you. The gravity will bring it down to you, and that was the right play. Oh, dear. Finley puts a charge into one to right center field. And again, a long, loud out for Finley. He's hit a couple wow. of balls, and then 95% of the parks in baseball would have gotten out of here tonight. What's on tap brought to you by Miller Diamondbacks Training Centers are the official youth baseball and softball camps of the Diamondbacks. We're starting our fifth year of teaching baseball the Diamondbacks way week long baseball and softball camps for kids ages 7 to 16. They have four different types of camps to serve every level of player. Former professional players and coaches are the instructors along with collegiate and high school coaches call us. To learn more, 1 800 821 7152. Benefits Arizona Diamondbacks Charities. Here we go in the bottom of the sixth inning. Diamondbacks leading 1 0. 15 up, 15 down for Randy Johnson. 1 and 1 on DeRosa, bottom third of the order. Will be followed by Nick Green and then the pitcher Mike Hampton. Johnson should be fresh still. Only in the 60s with his pinch count. Throwing a lot of strikes tonight, Tommy. Is he ever? Tapper left side. Tracy throws out DeRosa to begin the sixth inning. Nick Green grounded to short his first time up. Takes a pitch way inside for ball one. Johnson has thrown 52 strikes. Only 17 balls in the entire game. Amazing. That is fabulous efficiency. One and one to Green. Still throwing hard, Tommy. 95 miles an hour on that heater to Green. 
Green unable to catch up with it. Boy, when this guy gets it going, it is so much fun to watch. Randy, not not Green. I understand. I think people at home figured that's what you were talking about. Well, sometimes you have to clarify. Johnson looking in, getting a sign from Robbie Hammock, going to work two and one on Green. Check swing and a miss on a slider. It almost brought him to his knees. <laughs> the old equalizer put a wrinkle in it, take all out, all the fun out of it for one Nick Green. Let's see if he throws it again. Usually, if you make a guy look bad with one, you come back with it. Let's see if Randy does. Challenge with a fastball. Came with the gas. Nary and Atlanta Brave has reached base in the game here tonight. And we're in the bottom of the sixth inning with one out. Two two pitch struck him out on the slider. Strikeout number eight for Johnson his first strikeout since the fourth inning. Gorgeous slider just gorgeous not so gorgeous to Nick Green but. Bottom drops out of this slider. Right over the top of it beautiful pitch. Now the pitcher Hampton. And Johnson going to take a look in to get the sign from Hammock. Two down, nobody on. First pitch slider, strike one to the Atlanta pitcher. Just strike after strike after strike, Tommy. 57 strikes against 17 balls of his 74 pitches in the game here tonight. He threw that pitch right where he wanted to time. You saw Robbie Hammock reach high show and throw it to me up here. Randy threw it just where Robbie Hammock wanted it. Fastball threw it right by him one ball and two strikes at ninety seven miles per hour on his seventy six pitch of the game gas. One and two to Hampton. Tapper towards short. Charging hard. Cintron. The throw is in time oh, 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 to get baby. Hampton at first. And Johnson, a big high five for Alex as he goes trotting back to the dugout. 18 up, 18 down for Johnson in Atlanta. Nine more outs to go. Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Net Arizona is presented by America West Airlines. Log on for low fares, fewer restrictions, and by Quest, the spirit of service. Beautiful night in Atlanta. And we march on in the seventh inning, where the story tonight has been that man, Randy Johnson. He's retired the first 18 Atlanta Braves. With eight strikeouts. And Johnson has been, well, remarkable here through the front six innings. He has not thrown more than five balls out of the strike zone in any single inning in the game. Notice nobody's sitting near him, nobody's talking to him. Paul Assard, he's always sitting next to him. He's got to be next to him. Well the Diamondbacks could give him a little bit more breathing room certainly you're thinking about one thing but the thing that you can't forget about is still the score of this game. That's right. You got to win this baby first you got to score some more runs. You'd hate to see a guy pitching the way Johnson is pitching. Have him make one mistake and then all of a sudden you're in a tie ball game. Yeah you'd like to give him some breathing room here. Broken bat roller to the second baseman Green who throws out Danny Bautista. Not many hard hit balls off of Mike Hampton tonight Tommy. No Bautista singled in the right field in the second. The hardest hit ball. That produced a hit. Was the double by Cintron which drove in Danny in the second inning. 
Finley has hit a couple of balls right on the nose. Sure has. But they were caught in front of the wall by J.D. Drew. Hammock taps over one, and that's a fair ball. Bounces over near the stands. Robbie, or I beg your pardon, Alex Sintron advancing on a second with his second hit of the game. Oh, well, you asked for some offense. You received some offense. Nice play. Just chopped right down the line. DeRosa gives it all he's got down the line. Takes a big in-between hop right off his wrist and heads over into foul territory. Nice try there by DeRosa. Now let's see if we can play him here, Tommy. Robbie Hammett coming up. He has struck out and flied out to left. Alex, a couple of doubles in the game here tonight. Nine on the year. All one high and away. And here's the situation you were talking about earlier. And why I've heard Joe Morgan say it a, a thousand times. He believes the most difficult job of any National League player is to hit eighth in a lineup. That's right, because you just don't know if he's going to go after you or not. But that's good right there, what you're seeing from Robbie Hammock. He's Mike Hampton's going to try and tease you and taunt you just off the plate. And now if he walks you, he walks you. But you can't help him out here. 2 and 0 oh to Hammock. 3 and 0. Oh. And they walk him on four straight. Two on, one out. Good job by Robbie Hammock. Laid off a couple of tough ones to get to 2-0, and oh, and then Hampton just decided, heck with it, I'm going to put him on base. And I'm sure we'll see Randy try to drop a sacrifice here. He's been stellar at everything tonight. Wouldn't expect anything less than a perfect bunt. Johnson already a pair of sacrifices this year. Tonight he has struck out and lined out hard to the right fielder J.D. Drew. And they let him swing away on the first pitch and he hits it off the end of the bat foul. Now they may ask him to bunt or they may have wanted him to bunt there. Al Pedrique comes trotting down the line to talk to Johnson. That's a telltale sign that yeah. Randy missed <laughs> the bunt sign right there. He's probably going to put it on again just to make doubly sure. All you need is a bunt here. Corner infielders creeping in. And Johnson drops a bunt foul. Runners at first and second, one away here in the top of the seventh inning. Johnson shortens up. Pulls the bat away, and they call it strike three. Well, Johnson leaning out over, looking for something away. He gets a little slider down and in. I think that was probably down because Randy's eight feet tall, but. Greg Gibson said it was good enough. Now Chad Tracy He's had a good night of the plate. Lined one right off the leg of Hampton who threw him out in the first inning, walked in the third, and then had an infield hit in the fifth. But this kid just, you can see more confidence day by day. As he's now getting into his third full week. In the major leagues. He's well grounded too. His teammates have received him really well, Tom. They like his attitude. They like the way he just goes about his business. And there's a rocket in the center field, a base hit. Rounding third is Cintron. Throw going to third, and Hammock caught in the rundown. And now the tag will be made, an RBI base hit by Tracy. Boy, that kid is going to be something. 
He always seems to come up with a big hit. Beautiful job, Chadley. 2 0. D backs in front. Eighteen batters have come to the plate tonight wearing an Atlanta Braves uniform and 18 in a row have been retired by Randy Johnson. So now he'll begin his third time through the batting order and it is indeed getting serious. So now the 40 year old Walnut Creek California native climbs a mound to begin the bottom of the seventh inning with a two nothing lead. It'll be Garcia Franco and Chipper Jones. Garcia is grounded to first and struck out. He tried to bunt his way on in the bottom of the first inning. Hillenbrand made a very nice play when Johnson was tardy going to cover the bag. Hillenbrand picked it up and tagged him out. Hook foul one and one. Hillenbrand made a great play on that play. Kind of surprised that Garcia might not be trying it. Well, this is Ben Davis country here, the seventh inning of a perfect game. The score was two zip at the time. Foul straight back. Pretty good cut right there by Garcia. Johnson has thrown 80 pitches in the game, 61 strikes. Randy Johnson has never pitched a game where he faced 27 batters and retired all 27. Oh, oh, oh. Swing and a miss, and that's strikeout number nine for the big unit. Gas right down Broadway. Jesse Garcia just got it blown right by him. Robbie wants it up. He gets it right down the middle. And when you're throwing as hard as Randy is, you can get away with those. Oh, what a performance. Julio Franco is struck out swinging and flied out to center field. Wow. <laughs> Guy pitching the kind of game he's pitching tonight, and you don't get that call. Where the heck could that have been? That couldn't have been more in the middle of the plate or thigh high. <laughs> well, Johnson not letting anything bother him here tonight. He is getting the ball, no fooling around, stepping right back on the rubber, looking in for the side. 97 miles an hour on that heater to a great fastball hitter in Julio Franco. Fastball coming again, and it's high at 98 miles per hour. This not only is the best game Johnson has pitched this season, that's an understatement. It's also his best velocity in any game so far this season. He has consistently been pitching, not throwing, pitching 95 and up all night long. You're doggone right. And that fastball again at 98. Wow. Well, we remember the two hitter he threw in San Diego. That was one of the best performances I've seen, not only from Randy Johnson, from but from about anybody. So far, he's even better tonight. You know, Tommy, I was never a part either for or against a no hitter. In my 17 years, I never played. I never played behind a no hitter, and I never was on a team that was no hit. Two and two to Franco. Bouncing ball right side. Kate has got it. Throw to first. Two away here in the seventh inning. Well, I know one time during your career, and maybe it was more, but I know one time in your career, you nearly played behind a no hitter with two outs in the ninth inning at Wrigley Field. And Otis Nixon That's slapped right. a base hit in the left field against Jose uh, Guzman. Jose Guzman, eight and two thirds. And then a base hit, and then I played behind another eight and two thirds behind Frank Castillo. Yeah, that's right. And Bernard Gilkey, both of those ex, ex D backs, Bernard Gilkey broke it up with a triple. And boy, what a tease that is. You get to eight and two thirds, and it, and it doesn't happen. Of course, the Diamondbacks have never had one in franchise history. They have been no hit by Jose Jimenez. Who knows of that game any more than the fellow on the mound, Randy Johnson. 
Of course, our old buddy Ken Phelps, we like to rib him a lot. He broke one up. Eight and two thirds with a home run. That's exactly right. So not only did he break up a no hitter, he broke up a shutout as well. Swing and a miss. Johnson at 97 miles per hour again. Cut it out, and I mean it, big fella. That was a great fastball. One and two to Chipper Jones. Fastball high again at 97. He's in a rut. Yeah, he's stuck on 97. And that was right where Robbie Hammock wanted that. His command is just perfect tonight, Tommy. Every pitch that he's thrown is right where Robbie Hammock's wanted it. 2-2 two, two pitch. Struck him out on the slider. Oh, baby. 21 up, 21 down by Randy Johnson. Six outs away from perfection. Diamondbacks lead Atlanta 2 0. And what's on tap presented by Budweiser? Come on over to the Fox Sports Grill Road Game Party. That'll be on Wednesday, May the 26th, as the Diamondbacks take on the Giants and hang out and enjoy some great food and fun at Fox Sports Grill. That's in North Scottsdale. And the game will be on Fox Sports Net against the Giants a week from tomorrow. It's always fun to play the Gigantes. What wars those are, D backs and Giants. A little payback this year, I think. That's right. The Diamondbacks were worn <laughs> out. We wore it, so to speak. By the Giants last year. All right, here we go. Top of the eighth inning. Diamondbacks have Matt Cato, Luis Gonzalez, Shea Hillenbrand coming up against Mike Hampton. Of course, Randy Johnson was on the other end of a no hitter by Jose Jimenez. Back in 1999 and I mean Johnson pitched beautifully in that game as Hampton is here tonight. But sometimes destiny is just not on your side and that appears to be the case knock on wood. For Mike Hampton at least through the front seven. We're going into this inning Mike Hampton throwing the ball beautifully he really has. Alex Centron has hurt him twice with a couple of doubles but really. Not many hard hit balls. 3 0 to Matt Cato. And it's in their strength. Another big inning for the Diamondbacks. Sure, you've got two runs, but it wouldn't hurt to get a couple of more, Tommy. You still got to think about winning this game, not what's going on in your side of the dugout. One away on the bouncing ball to Garcia. Kata hitless night tonight in four at bats. Luis Gonzalez is 0 for 2, drew a walk in the third inning. Twice has bounced out to the pitcher. The first time up, he ended the inning on a double play. Well, you know what everybody on that dugout, in that dugout, is thinking about right now. The same thing you are, the same thing we are. Knowing full well that Randy Johnson, who's ducked back up under the tunnel and into the clubhouse, is six outs away from perfection. Here at Turner Field in Atlanta. Broken bat. Two hopper to second. Two away. Well, he needs to get back out in the dugout because the Diamondbacks have made a couple of quick outs. If you're wondering, Randy Johnson has thrown a no hitter. On June the 2nd, 1990, pitching for Seattle, he no hit the Detroit Tigers. Nobody saying a word to him. Just the way it should be. And there's a base hit through the hole in the right field by Hillenbrand, his first hit tonight. Nice piece of hitting right there, Shea Hillenbrand, just inside off that ball. 
Let's check in down near the Diamondbacks dugout with Big Todd Wolf. It's kind of interesting, guys. Randy Johnson did speak to third base coach Al Pedrique between innings. I saw Robin Yount having a conversation with catcher Robbie Hammock. Obviously, nobody else talking to Randy, but I can tell you this the fans upside the dugout here are letting Randy know exactly what he may be on the verge of. There is no <laughs> question about that. I'll send it back to you. All right, we'll be checking back in with Todd Walsh throughout the night. Well, Tommy, I remember. Some no hitters being close to thrown against teams that I was on and we'd be screaming at him from the dugout. Hey you got a no hitter going. <laughs> hey look no hits. <laughs> you know we'd be screaming at him trying to let him know trying to jinx him. I can promise you the Braves are letting him know and the fans are letting him know. Line in the right field and Finley has something to show for. It. Perhaps the weakest ball that he's hit all <laughs> night long towards right. But the first time he has a base hit. Well, J.D. Drew, if you're going to play me on the track back there, I'm going to hit it in front of you. Steve Finley's just swinging the bat so well this year. After struggling in the leadoff spot early in the year, he's just found a home in the five hole. What well, seems like two years ago, doesn't I it? I know it. All right, now Danny Bautista, back to back two out hits from Hill and Brandon Finley. Danny one of three singled and scored in the second inning. High ball one. Philadelphia leads the Dodgers 7 6 at game in the seventh inning. Colorado beating up on the Reds 8 3 in the eighth. Told you the Giants are in Chicago with a 1 0 lead over the Cubs. Oh boy, that had to hurt. That sure did. How about the Reds going in and beating up on the Dodgers at Chavez Ravine earlier? Three in a row. This weekend. You want to be a catcher, folks? Oh, goodness. Right in the, either the bicep or the shoulder. Down the right field line, will it fall? No. Running grab made by JD Drew will end the inning. Good piece of hitting by Danny. Just sure didn't get was. a break. All right, we go to the bottom of the eighth. Johnson taking the mound, two nothing lead. MLB at Home is presented by Geico. Fifteen minutes could save you fifteen percent or more on car insurance. Diamondbacks lead 2 0 as Randy Johnson takes the mound to begin the bottom half of the eighth inning. He has set down the Braves in order in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh innings. Ten strikeouts. Nary a Brave has reached base. Andrew Jones to lead things off. He's flying out to center and lined out hard to Gonzalez in left. First pitch swinging, fouls it away on a first pitch slider. The two hardest hit balls of the night came off the bats of two men that will come up in this inning. Andrew Jones lined out, as I mentioned, in the fifth inning. Two batters after that, J.D. Drew lined out to Danny Bautista in right. Swing and a miss, and the bat Whoa. goes flying. That's almost as far as any hit ball tonight has gone by the Braves. <laughs> the head was out, as we say. Andrew Jones got a 95 mile an hour fastball, swung through it, and helicoptered it all the way over to the Diamondbacks on deck circle. Oh, and two. Johnson winds, kicks, and delivers, and a fastball is high and away. But once again, that right where Robbie Hammock wanted that pitch. Up and away. Try to get him to chase out of the zone because Jones will chase out of the zone. Fly ball in the center field. Finley waving off Danny Bautista. One away here in the Atlanta eighth inning. Well, to get this far, you can say every inning has been the biggest inning of the game for Johnson, but this unquestionably is. Just if you look at the three players that are coming up to bat in this inning for Atlanta. Well, he just got through Andrew Jones, the cleanup hitter. 
This is the guy that's seen 17 18 pitches tonight. This is the guy that has seen more of Randy Johnson than anybody in the Braves lineup. So this kid has just been a thorn even though Randy's gotten him out twice. He's really hung in there tough with him. Swing and a foul ball back on a fastball at 96 miles per hour. Johnson has struck out at least one batter in every inning in a game here tonight. The only inning he did not strike out a batter is when he faced this same trio in the fifth. Ten strikeouts. Twenty two consecutive Braves set down. Pretty good rip at that fastball at 97 and now it's 0 and 2. This kid has been a foul ball waiting to happen tonight. He must have fouled off of the 20 pitches he's seen. He's probably fouled off 16 of them. Nearly two dozen pitchers have thrown two no hitters over their careers. Here's the 0 2. Slider down. Of course, Nolan Ryan threw more than anybody. He had seven in 73, threw two, one in 74, one in 75, threw another with Houston in 81. And then his final two came with the Rangers in 1990 and 1991. One, two to Estrada. Struck him oh. out swinging on his slider. Johnson now four outs away from perfection. You think there's anything left in that man's tank Tom watch this pitch here slider with some tifus down and in on the back foot of Johnny Estrada watch how much this ball breaks. Wow no chance beautiful pitch. Now Johnson goes to work on left handed batting J.D. Drew has struck out swinging and lined out to right. Swing and a miss on a first pitch slider. Wow. Beautiful pitch. Cheating on the fastball there. JD Drew got out guessed. Got the slider, missed it by eight feet. Johnson going to work. And a slider again is outside. One and one to Drew. Dropped down a little bit. Tried to give JD Drew a little different view of it. Made a good pitch just off the plate on the outside edge. Fly ball down the left field line, a long run, and it's out of play into the first row of the seats. Well, we talked about it earlier in the game, Tom, when Andrew Jones lined out to Gonzo, and then I can't remember who the next hitter was, but he just missed a double by a couple of feet down the left field line. And that's when you're thinking, you know what? This might be something special we're seeing. Well, whether he gets or not, this has been something special we've seen so far. This will be the 103rd pitch of the game for Randy Johnson. He's thrown 76 strikes, 26 balls. My goodness. One and two to Drew. Ground ball right side. Kate has got it. Oh, One and four consecutive batters set down by Randy Johnson. Don't go anywhere. For over 75 years, people have saved money with. Oh, with Geico. Oh, sorry. From the top. For over 75 years. <laughs> Keep it together. <laughs> what are you doing there? Stop making Geico. Me saving people money for over 75 years. Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Net Arizona is presented by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. Randy Johnson is due up third here in the top half of the ninth inning. 24 consecutive batters set down by Johnson, and he is three outs away from a perfect game. Well, you know what, Tommy, with him hitting third, you know, he's, his pitch count starting to get up. You might want to think about pinch hitting for him this, this inning, don't you think? Oh, yeah, I'm sure that's something that <laughs> very likely. And a base hit in the left field by Centrone. What a good night for Alex. Very good night. He has been right on the money with every swing he's had tonight off Mike Hampton. That's his 
third bullet. He's been involved in both the tallies for the Diamondbacks. He drove in the first run, scored the second run. It's good to see him getting it going right handed too, Tommy. Right back to Hampton. Whoa. And he threw to the wrong man covering the bag and on to third goes Alex. That'll be a fielder's choice. And unfortunately for Hampton they're going to charge him with a throwing air. And well, they're on the corners with nobody out. Well Tom that that's a mistake by Hampton. You've got to know who's covering the bag. The shortstop's covering the bag. He throws it to the second baseman. You got to know ahead of time who's covering the bag. A lot of times you'll see. trying to get a bunt down now but we saw earlier that Hampton's got to know who's covering the bag the shortstop or the second baseman. Oh and one to count on Randy Johnson with the runners on the corners and they'll throw over to first sending Hammock back to the bag. Backs hoping to get a couple of put away runs before all the excitement to come in the bottom of the ninth inning. Well, Johnson getting a standing ovation as he came to the plate in this at bat. The crowd here in Atlanta has clearly jumped into his corner. I mean, when he got the final out there in the eighth inning, they were standing and applauding as he started walking back to the Diamondback dugout. That's great to see. Knowledgeable fans appreciating greatness. Fouled away one and two now on Johnson who is 0 for three in the game struck out swinging looking and lined out to right field. I mean, guys like this fellow don't come around but once maybe every 50 years. It's good to see the fans acknowledge that. One and two to Johnson runner goes and a bouncing ball to the shortstop. So just like a sacrifice really they started the runner Johnson put the bat on the ball. But Centrone did not break to the plate on contact. Well he may have been able to score there but with nobody out play it safe use it like a sacrifice and really the the best diamond back hitter so far this year with runners in scoring position is stepping into the batter's box right yep. now. And Chad Tracy delivered again in the seventh inning of the game here tonight with an RBI single with two outs and now runners at second and third the infield drawn in and a one hopper right at Franco and we may have jinxed him. I put the Moa Chi Chi on him I'm sorry about that Chad Tracy. Now let's see if Matt Cater can get a big two out hit. Racy a couple of hits on base three times with an RBI but leaves him at second and third here. And now it's up to Kata. Matt 0 for 4 in a game reached on an error in the first inning. The infield backs up. And Kata first pitch swinging fly ball to center field. So Jones has got it. And here we go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. Randy Johnson three outs away from a perfect game facing DeRosa, Green, and a pinch hitter. We head for the bottom half of the ninth inning. And Randy Johnson 24 up 24 down the last perfect game thrown by a national league. Was El Presidente Dennis Martinez with Montreal back on July the 28th 1991 against the Dodgers only six perfect games have been thrown in National League history. And you see only four since the turn of the last century. Jim Bunning, of course now a state senator from Kentucky, Sandy Koufax did it against the Chicago Cubs on September 9th of 65. 
Tom Browning a perfect game against the Dodgers in 88. And then Dennis Martinez against the Dodgers in 91. Bottom of the ninth inning, and DeRosa to lead it off. A slider is down low for ball one. Randy Johnson, 40 years old. Last year, only pitched in 18 games. Had a 6-8 and eight record. His knee was surgically repaired. And many wondered when he came back if, A, he could come back from a surgically repaired knee, and could he still be effective after turning 40 years of age in September of last season. Well there's been very little doubt about that this entire year and tonight trying to throw a major league and perhaps final exclamation point on that question or question. Exactly any questions if you've been watching this game there are no questions. This guy has been unbelievable and that's not the right word it's, it's astounding there's so many superlatives you can use. Bouncing ball to Matt Cato on two hops. He gloves, throws to Hillenbrand. One away here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Oh, baby. Beautiful pitching. Strike after strike after strike. 107 pitches thrown in the game tonight by Randy Johnson. 80 strikes, 27 balls. Nobody up on the top step. That's interesting. Probably superstitious down there. Usually you'll see a bunch of people on the top step of the dugout. Fastball strike one to Nick Green, the rookie seeing Randy Johnson for the first time tonight. He hit a little roller at Cintron and made an excellent play to throw him out. Nobody on the top step. Swing and a miss on the slider at 88 miles per hour. He gets some 97 mile an hour gas and then an 88 mile an hour slider. That's a good fastball for most guys. That's Randy's slider tonight. Johnson looking in and the 0 2 pitch. Slider at 90 miles per hour. Call that a strike. That's a strike. Johnson the five time Cy Young Award winner once in the American League four in a row as a diamond back in the National League and it took an injured knee to probably keeping away from winning five in a row last season. You're right and pitched well enough to be in the contention so far this year one two fouled out of play first base side. Well, you saw the Diamondback dugout, nary a soul on a stop to, uh, top step. Just about everybody up there over the railing and watching on the Atlanta side. They know they might be witnessing history. That's interesting, though, that the D backs, not one guy. Strike three called on a 97 mile per hour <laughs> fastball by Randy Johnson. He is one out away. From a perfect game, and the crowd stands at Turner Field. Oh, Tommy, I can't breathe. What a beautiful pitch right on the inside corner. 97 miles an hour. Randy Johnson, for all his accomplishments in the major leagues, the five Cy Young Awards, a co MVP along with Kurt Schilling in the World Series in 2001, all the big games. Has thrown a uh, no hitter, never a perfect Whoa. game. And Eddie Perez, a pinch hitter, is down a strike. One of those 86 mile an hour sliders right on his back foot. Eddie's been on the bench all night. He's finding out up close and personal what the rest of the Braves have been seeing tonight. 0 oh and 1 to Eddie Perez. And a fastball is outside. That's a strike. It's 948 here in Atlanta 648 back in Arizona. And Randy Johnson an out away from a perfect game the first since 91 in the National League and now he's a strike away. It is rare a visiting player comes into Atlanta and gets a standing ovation. But that's exactly what Johnson is getting <laughs> right now, and not one of his teammates exactly. standing that's, up. That's, for him. that's great. Listen to this crowd. One, two to Perez. Fastball high at 97 miles per hour. Once again, right where Robbie Hammock wanted it, up and out of the strike zone. Perez able to lay off, but 
Randy's just put on a clinic of not only stuff, but location. 9.49 now in Atlanta, 6.49 in Arizona. And a 2-2 to Perez. Yeah! Swing and a miss, and Randy Johnson, at 40 years young, has thrown a perfect game, the seventh <laughs> in National League history. Oh, look at his teammates out there mobbing him, Tommy. Oh, that is awesome. What a way to start a road trip, baby. <laughs> Doesn't get much better now, oh, does it? I've never seen that before. I want to go down there and jump on him. Come on, Tommy. Let's go down there. 13 strikeouts tonight for Randy Johnson. And needless to say, a spectacular performance by one of the game's all-time greats. Uh, it was a pleasure, Tommy, to watch this with you. Listen to these Braves fans. That is great. And I hope everybody's going just as ape out in Arizona because you've seen history tonight folks big time history could he come back from the bum knee could he get people out the way he used to at 40 need to ask any more well ask Eddie Perez gas right by him Randy just a point upstairs and a fist pump and watch this bench you think they weren't nervous <laughs> Richie Sexton leading the charge out. 117 pitches for Johnson, 87 of the 117 for strikes. What a look at the big fella smiling. Robbie Hammock coming up, giving him love. Take your helmet off, you're going to hurt the big fella. Oh boy, Robbie. Look at that. Richie Sexton, the first guy there from the dugout. I can't see enough of this. Let's take another look right by you. Look at Robbie. Robbie's jumping for joy. Randy, a big smile. Oh, what a great moment that is. Let's I'm not it. even playing, Tommy. That's one of the best moments of my life. Let's send it downstairs to Todd Walsh. All right, thank you very much, guys. I just spoke to Randy Johnson. His quote was simply this, I'm tired. I'll talk to you in a bit. We'll hear from him on the Arizona Sports Report. But right now, manager Bob Brenly and Bob, uh, the understatement of the century. Randy was on tonight. Oh, man, I mean, everything working. Spotting his fastball, throwing the slider in the dirt when he wanted to, throwing it for strikes when he wanted to. Uh, getting ahead of every hitter. There was really only a couple of at-bats where they made him work hard. Uh, Estrada, the catcher, had one. Green, the second baseman, had an at-bat where they fouled off some pitches. but. Uh, other than that, that was uh, that's as good as it gets. This was a team effort, though. I think to Alex Cintron, a, a play he made, Shea Hillenbrand early on, Danny Bautista with the basket catch. The, these guys wanted this tonight for, for Randy and for everybody. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, we even talked on the bench about whether we should uh, bring Donnie Sadler in for defense, but we didn't want to change anything. It was it was going so good, and uh, R.J. was in such a great rhythm. We didn't want to do anything to break that up. What was it like on the bench in the eighth and the ninth inning? Where were you? Did you do anything special? Uh, my knuckles are sore from banging on Matt Cade's bat. I was standing in front of bat rack and his bat just happened to be there right by my right hand and before every pitch from the sixth inning on I was tapping on that bat and uh, I'll tell you for a perfect game and to win a ball game like this uh, that's about as hard as we've uh, we've been grinding all year on the bench. Go enjoy the moment. You Bob got Renley. that right Todd. Thanks. Uh, Bob Brenly manager of the Arizona Diamondbacks again I talked to Randy Johnson we'll hear from him later also catcher Robbie Havoc these guys just wanted to be in the room to celebrate the moment it has been a, a year with a lot of adversity as you know Tom and they're soaking it up right now we'll hear from them in just a bit we'll send it back upstairs to you Todd thank you so Randy Johnson twirls the seventh perfect game in National League history the 17th perfect game in Major League history two nothing our final what a night. How rare is a perfect game? We haven't seen one in the National League in 14 years. And Lord knows when we'll see another. But we saw one tonight, and what a privilege it was. Diamondbacks behind Randy Johnson's perfect game beat the Atlanta Braves 2 0. We'll never forget it. Eddie Perez, a swing and a miss for the final out, the 13th strikeout. Arizona Sports Report tonight at 9 30. We now join the Tim McCarver Show.